This is Basis 95, part one. And uh, we've just been speaking. Basis 95, part one with Laura. Hello, Laura. Hi, Miles. And are you uh, have come quite some distance on a an not interrupted journey. Yes, that's Because this right. is actually the third attempt we've chosen to do this. And you have come a huge distance from Scotland. Yeah. Down to, uh, to here in Wiltshire. Mm -hmm. And um, you've got a heck of a story to tell. Yeah. Could we just discover who you, if you could just all look a little bit off to your, to your right. Right. That's fine. Just a little bit. That's okay. No, the other way. You had to split the difference. That's it. Perfect. Look at the middle of camera, sweetness. Okay. Okay. Um, well done for getting here. What has happened, Laura? Who are you? And um, what the heck's going on? Well, my name's Laura Loudon, and I'm a single mother of three children, um, two of whom are now four and five years old. Um, when they were two years ago, when they were two and three years old, they were removed on a um, social work emergency care order due to risk of emotional abuse. Um, that's what the social work put it under as. Um, on a Friday, my lawyer had arrived at the court um, and had said, where's the smoking gun? He didn't understand the urgency of the matter um, and basically didn't understand the grounds of referral. However, with it being a Friday, when they do these things at court, the judge will never take a risk over a weekend to keep the children until they can find out more about what's going on. And they, they took the children into care. And everybody was really shocked, especially me, my whole family, etc. However, um, by the by, um, on the 21st of December, um, this was about eight weeks later, something like that, um, I was told that the children, foster carers, could no longer look after them and they were getting moved the next day. And it turned out that they weren't moved the next day. They did leave the foster carers on the... 22nd but they didn't actually arrive at the next foster carers until the 23rd so there's 24 hours missing out their care plan um, so when I next saw the children it was a Christmas contact and as soon as the kids came in I noticed that they were different somehow and I couldn't pinpoint it but I'm a mother and you know your own kids and I took lots of photographs of them because I just thought they looked extremely pale, um, massive bags under their eyes. They didn't look well and they seemed quite energyless, really. Could you go into a lot more description of that in um, detail? I mean, that was a lot of detail. I mean, more detail exactly can you describe Well, that? at that particular time, I didn't know exactly what... Um, I hadn't noticed the biggest change of all, which had been... Um, their eye colour change. So Alicia used to be, um, and we've got photographs obviously of this, very greeny blue um, eyes and they were beautiful eyes actually, lovely, lovely colour, really striking and her eyes um, had changed to a very sort of hazily brown colour, nothing blue or green about them. And Sophia who is the youngest child, she had the most dramatic eye colour change because her eyes went from a very piercing blue colour to brown. So both children had simultaneously changed eye colour. And I know how this sounds. Um, however, yes, I'll come to the tongue tie in a minute. Uh, that's a good point. So I was a bit worried, obviously, and mentioned it straight away to the social work, who kind of said, um, 
oh, it'll be the light or it'll be this, you know, different clothes that they wear, bring out different eye colours. And they really kind of um, didn't take me seriously. So I got the photographs that I had of the children previously, took them in to one of the heads, bosses at the social work centre in Edinburgh and through a lot of persuasion on my part they agreed to let the children see an optologist which is a basically an eye specialist doctor and the eye specialist doctor looked at their eyes and said that no eye colour change should happen after six months old that is your determined eye colour for life and he's looked at their eyes, but because their eyes were fine, as in they could still see, etc., he was perplexed and basically that was didn't give me any more an any answers. Um, I also noticed that their ears had changed shape because um, Alicia always had little pointy out, sticky out ears, and they were quite cute when I had her ponytails, but her ears were much flatter, and. Um, I didn't know what to make of any of this. It was really confusing and quite, um, well, very scary, to be honest. Um, so then um, I decided to try to get the social work um, to, well, I, I asked them if they could see a doctor, an actual specialist doctor. And they said that there was no need for that at all. So then I had to take it higher than that. And I actually had to go to, one of the directors of the social work who's since left, and he instructed them um, to see the community health team specialist who put the children to a consultant at the Sick Kids. So two consultants at the Sick Children's Hospital in Edinburgh looked at the children, gave them an MOT, I think they call it, and said that in the report that I've got, um, that yes, there had been a change in both their eye colours, they also noticed that Alicia, who had had tongue tie previously, which means that the part under your tongue um, was very, very tight when she was born. So she could only stick her tongue out, her mouth, a tiny little bit. But because it didn't affect her eating or her speaking, they had left it. They said there was no need for an operation. But that had somehow disappeared. So Alicia's tongue tie, as well as her eye colour change, had gone. So had her anemia and so had her allergy to penicillin. Um, and they discovered that Sophia was now double jointed and whereas before she wasn't. Um, and really from that point on, I've been trying to find out what on earth has happened to my kids and why both of them have changed so dramatically at the same time, basically overnight. Well, let's just go back on this. Mm -hmm. What was the real reason? What What did they say was the reason? What brought this circumstance that the kids were taken away in the first place? Well, I've got them. I've got that written down. Actually, just give me a second. Um, previously to this happening, in the lead up to it, about six months previous to that, I had lost my private tenancy. I had a lovely three bedroom private tenancy. Now, e explain all that to what people, what that means in terms of, you know, to a wider audience, what does private tenancy okay. mean? And um, it was a, a house that I rented that the council paid me housing benefit to pay the landlord for. So it wasn't a council tenancy, it was a private let. And um, we were quite happy living there until the landlord decided to, change, to sell the house. And so we were given eight weeks notice, which meant I had to present as homeless at Edinburgh Council who then put us in a hostel in one of the worst areas in Edinburgh. Um, however, it was a roof over our heads. From there, they said that the kids shouldn't be there because there was um, it was some sort of um, place where prisoners come out of jail. Halfway house, I think they call it. Um, so they moved us to Hawkill Court, which was 13 flights up. And the lift didn't work, so I had a double buggy with two kids with no lift. So they said that wasn't suitable. So then they moved me to a and b and then they moved me to another B&B because they said that B&B &B was full. Um, and then they wrote in the grounds of referral that I had moved 
of my own accord too many times, and this had unsettled the children. That was one of the reasons they'd used. Um, they also said that I had, um, in the tendency I'd had previously, before all the homeless um, carry on, I'd actually had bed bugs, and I had reports from rent kill to say that. I didn't know what they were, but we were all covered in bites. rent kill came in, they told me that we had bed bugs, after they had taken samples of little sticky tape things that insects ran across at night, and they treated them. Well, um, where was the b- bed bug situation? That was in Chancellor Grove. And that was when? That was the first? Th- that was in 2016. It would have been about... Um, was that one of the homes you were moved to, or what? Um, no, that was my private tenancy at the time. However, um, the social work put in the grounds of referral that the bed bugs where they, they, I hadn't had bed bugs and that I had made that fact up that I had bed bugs, even though I had paperwork from rent a kill and they charged £800 for three treatments of these bed bugs. Um, so that was another reason they used, but because it was an emergency care order, I didn't have any of the paperwork. I was told the children were getting removed when I went to pick up them up from nursery and these are the reasons they presented about an hour later at the sheriff court. So at the time, I couldn't disprove the fact that um, what they were saying was untrue. Um, they also used the fact that I had um, assaulted somebody, um, I had a, a scuffle with somebody, and I, yes, I did get charged with assault. However, it was one black eye this gentleman had, and they said that, because of the fact I had assaulted this gentleman, even though the children were tucked up in bed with my mum looking after them three miles away, the judge said that that had was, um, what if I had got the jail? And my lawyer said, but that is, I can't remember the word he used. Supposition. Supposition, that was it, thank you. Um, so they used that. Um, and basically, they said it was risk of emotional abuse. And that's something that the social worker uses in more and more now. Um, and it's almost, they're blaming you for something you're not, you've not actually done yet, but they're saying that you could do in the future. So it's a very hard thing to either prove or disprove. Um, but until then, that th- this point in time, um, I'd had no social work involvement for, oh, I can't even remember the last time. I think because the children were both under a certain age, they were, they, they'd went to the nursery, um, which I'm not sure if I'm allowed to name. However, um, in North East Edinburgh, and this was because of the fact that I had uh, Sean, who was 14, my, my eldest child, and I also was on my own and I had a 15 month age gap between Alicia and Sophia. So because of that, I needed some nursery for the children. Well, I was hoping to get, it's called a early year centre in Scotland. And basically the children attended there. Um, But there was no social work involvement. Um, There was no, as my lawyer put it, smoking gun. And basically, what he, did he exactly mean, smoking gun? What was the actual reason that was? Well, that was the, that? The, that was the a million dollar question because they they didn't have an actual reason. There was no event. There was no um, particular scenario. There was nothing that had happened that day or in that last week. That that's what my lawyer said to the judge in court. Where's the smoking gun? As in, you know, he couldn't understand it. He actually was really perplexed and said to the children's reporter that he thought this whole thing was ridiculous. Um, What what, what was their response to all that? Well, they were, they seemed to have an agenda, to be honest. Why do you think that? What was the, what's the reason here? I don't know. I really don't know. Um, They obviously did this for a reason um and i don't know what it was um i was born on halloween and 
I was born at five to three in the morning. Um, and by the by, my parents were in a satanic sect. Is that the right word? Well, yeah, the the, the, the satanic sect, sect thing. And uh, was that the reason why the kids were taken? You were practicing I, black I, magic or something? Well, I don't know, Miles. This is one of the possibilities, I suppose. I, I really don't know what their agenda was. Okay, well, l let's get to your your pa your parents. Yeah. Um, what exactly is the climate here with your parents and the... What about the um, the father of the children? Well, the you, father... The two the, fathers. You've got two two different... Yeah, they're, they're both dead, um, unfortunately. So what about their background? Okay, I want to know the background of the fathers uh -huh. and your parents and why you have just said they're in a satanic set? Um, well, my mum and dad have never actually admitted openly to me being in a satanic set. However... It's a heck of a thing to say. Yes, it certainly is. So I, we, you're need, going to need to so, sort of explain that. So we just need an explanation, okay. a sort of a paragraph on the others involved. Yeah. Right, well, my dad wears a ring and... Um, this ring signifies being a pagan master. Um, and he's got on his floor, in his living room, he's got, is it a pentagram? Is that the right word? Painted, but he's got it covered in a, a kind of foam layer, um, which is, uh, he didn't used to have it covered, but when people started coming to the house and asking why he had that on his floor, he told me it was part of a compass. And it's only in the last couple of years that, I've been trying to ask family members, etc., about certain photographs I've come across, certain things I've heard about them, etc. Uh, okay, but in this, let's explore the other family members, obviously, without mentioning names if you don't have to. But okay. uh, what's the basic climate of the family, uh, you know, your parents, and this pagan stuff? Being pagan doesn't mean you're satanic. No, um the pagan master ring is that's what it signifies. However, what I have um, heard from other relatives and from people who have known my parents for a long time have said that when they were younger, they were involved with a satanic sect. And whether that's got something to do with my children being removed, I don't know. Um, but however, I was born on Halloween and... Um, my mum. A lot did. of people are born on Halloween. Doesn't make them no, have their exactly. kids taken I, off them. I mean, I, I'm not. You know, I don't want to be. Uh, it's just another day of the year for me. However, for um, I've been told that if, for example, you were into some sort of satanic set and your child was born on Halloween, it would almost be like um, somebody very Christian having a child on Christmas Day. So it would be important to them. Well, since we're talking about your origins, uh, you have a certain eye discoloration yes. of some kind, which is similar to, we're not going to mention the person's name, mm -hmm. um, s similar to uh, a, a, a child that went missing in a foreign country somewhere. That's correct. So yeah. uh, you, now you've mentioned this in the phone calls and things that we've had before this recording. Could you explain all that? And again, we're concentrating on the, the climate of the background mm -hmm. of of your your background, your your family, and um, let's let's get let's explore that for now. Okay. Well, as long as I can remember, I've had a a brown mark in my eye, and um, I was never really told what it was. It wasn't. It doesn't affect my eyesight or anything, um, and it wasn't. I think I've only ever met two people. In We're talking life. about the iris here. The actual iris itself. Yeah. Oh, which eye? Um, my left one. Okay. Um, so it's got a brown, a brown mark, and I'm not sure what that means. Um, but it is quite an unusual thing. Um, but my parents were both. Um, uh, just before you go on to your parents, sometimes, uh, I'm not a doctor in any shape or form, mm. um, but a discolorations or errors in that part of the iris can indicate, or some have have said that they indicate that um, you may have other ailments uh, in your body of some kind. Do you have any other problems that, that or, or, or funny things that you want to talk about, which you know, differences slightly or whatever? 
Um, no, I mean, I don't, I can't really think of any. Um, I'm healthy, so I don't have any, um, you know, I've got the right amount of digits and everything like that, so um, I can't really think of anything that would... I mean, do you have a, what, do you know your blood group? I don't actually, I don't know. I, I was told it, um, but I can't remember. Because I mean, it's not racist negative or something, O negative or... Be negative. I don't know. I think they said it was the second most popular one. Which is Whatever. probably O. I don't know. I, I think I that know. sounds familiar. I think yeah. I think O sounds pretty familiar. So any other things which may indicate that you're slightly different to normal other people we're looking at you? Um, well, I sometimes get um, like sort of feelings that stuff's going to happen. Like we were on a, a holiday in the summer on a boat and um, we were in the theatre every night watching the show and for some reason I kept on thinking of all this water flooding into this theatre on this huge boat which was brand new and I couldn't stop thinking about it so I told um, my partner and he said, um, oh my goodness don't say anything like that because we're on a boat and we're in the middle of the ocean but I think it was about two days later we were in Barcelona um, at the port and there was a huge storm and there was water that gushed into the, because the drainage system at the pool wasn't seemingly um, able to cope with the amount of water that was coming down from the storm. And it ended up washed up, well, a lot of it into this theatre. It ran right into this theatre, a lot of water. Um, and the theatre, I think, was closed for several hours and the carpet was still really, really wet that night when we went in to see the show. So, yeah, I can be quite um, intuitive, if you like, at times. So that's women's intuition, and but it wasn't any other... You weren't sinking or anything like that? No, no, we weren't sinking. However, I think if we'd been at sea, it would have been quite um, different because... Is this it, the Mediterranean? This was in Barcelona, wasn't it? Um, and it was a brand new boat. But just the fact that I'd had this... It's almost a vision of water pouring into this theatre and for it to happen a couple of days later, it was a bit odd. Any others? Um, not that I can think of offhand. I've had a couple of dreams that have come true. Um, nothing that I can think of right now, no. Okay, well, uh, let's concentrate on potential reasons why you would have your children taken... Uh, from you so let's concentrate on on the fathers uh are there any issues there yes, there were there were issues any with issues where there might be some kind of ulterior motive to set set you up for any reason at all um well that's a good question actually but the father of my oldest son um he died in 2010 and he died um at 45 years old um and on his death certificate, it's got inconclusive death. Um, Alicia and Sophia's father... He sorry, uh, sorry. Wh what do you mean by inconclusive death? Well, they didn't know what had actually happened. Um, they knew what, that he'd... What, what happened? I mean, was well, he found it, dead or, or, or what? He was found dead by his 16-year-old son, yeah. And he was 45 at the time. That's and, your 16-year-old son? Um, well, it's my 16-year-old son's half-brother, because my okay. son was only 12 oh. at this time. Um, Just so people know, we've got uh, D a Didi here who's um, the, um, driven um, Laura down from Scotland here, so he's off camera at the moment. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, so, so what I'm trying to establish here is mm. why there should be any circumstances which would you regard as suspicious yeah. Which is why you've had your kids taken off you. Well, I thought it was... Suspicious. I want to look at family, family history. You've mentioned pagan belief systems. Yes. Uh, what's what's all in... Could you, could you explain as much as you can about all that? Well, it's difficult because I've not got anything as an actual proof of evidence, but I've always been told from my mum and my dad that I was special in some sort of way. And I just presumed they were talking about me being special because I was their daughter, because I'm an only child. Um, however, 
I've since heard the same thing being mentioned to me since my children have been removed. I've been frantically, obviously, trying to, especially after the huge change in both of them, to try to get to the bottom of this. And I have been told that there's something seemingly special about me, but nobody will tell me what it is. And seemingly there was something special about my daughter, my eldest daughter, okay, who was very psychic. But could we nail all this down, please? And who is saying this and wh where are you getting these in well, bits of information from? The people that um, have been telling me things like that I'm special, etc., don't want to be named because... Okay, well, we'll uh, do a no names, no pack drill, but, but yeah. what are they saying and when are they saying this to you? Um, they've said it to me since I've been trying to find out what happened to my kids. I've got a friend, we'll call him Mr X, who I've known since I was 30, I'm 44 now, and he said that basically they believe I'm special and we're saying they, let's just call the, pag the pagan people involved in this, believe that I'm special because I was born on Halloween. And I took it as well, okay, it's a big serve, a big day for um, pagans, I presume. Um, when, uh, okay, 44, uh, what, what, I mean, there's different, different d um, circumstances, different specialities. Was it a particular, t uh, a t particularly important year that time you were born? I was, was born on a blue moon on the 31st of October 1974. Um, and it was, well, obviously, a blue moon's a full moon. But f the next blue full moon that will happen on Halloween is this year, funnily enough. So one hasn't happened for the last 45 years. So it was quite an, unu an unusual night. Um, for the purposes of this recording, what do you consider, what is your knowledge of what a blue moon is? A blue moon is when there's two moons in the same month. Um, and it only happens every 2.7 years. So, yeah, because I think I think last year we had about four full yeah, moons. Yeah, that was moons. very unusual. We're, f we're recording in 2019 here. So. Yes, in, was, in 2018. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I did read that, yeah. Um, so a blue moon is, hence the expression once in a blue moon, because it's, and it never would happen in, a f in the month of February because obviously the amount of days. Um, however, a blue moon is something that occurs, as I said, every 2.7 years. Um, and I don't know if that's got anything to do with any of this. However, when I looked up my, my birthday, and it was, I only discovered this a couple of weeks ago, and I just wondered, because of that lunar werewolf thing that we had recently, is that what it was called? Super blood moon or something. The 22nd, I think, it happened in January. Uh, well, a blood moon is just merely a red moon, isn't yes. it? Yes. Because of an eclipse of the moon. That's correct. And I was, I was There's just, all sorts of names of these moons, but uh, we've had a lot of them in the last couple of years. Yeah. I was just interested in it, so I looked it up. And um, by the by, just put in my date of birth and was quite surprised when it came up that I was born on a blue moon. Um I mean, I suppose a few people are, you know, born on a blue moon. However, I don't know the relevance of that to pagans, for example, because I'm not one myself. Um, uh, are you a Christian? No, I'm not a Christian. I was baptised Catholic. However, my mum and dad divorced when I was two. And my mum, at that point, 1976, wasn't able to attend Catholic Church um, due to the fact they'd been divorced. Um, my dad was an uh, atheist, always has been. Um, my mum's side of the family are Catholic. What about the rest of the family viewing this divorce? Does, I mean, does that mean that you're not, in the eyes of the church you are not divorced, but in the eyes legally you weren't divorced, is that correct? Um, I honestly couldn't tell you. I don't know. Um, I just think that at that particular point in time, the Catholic Church, you weren't able to be divorced or they, they, they didn't, they frowned upon it somewhat. So my mum felt a bit ostracised. Well, King Henry VIII frowned upon it a wee bit longer and he, there were a few issues involving that. But in terms of 
the legal status and your emotional status um, in the family. What about all that? I'm trying to find reasons why you'd be singled out. Yeah, yeah, so have I been. Or have actually. you been singled out? I don't know, Miles. I, I'd love to know. You know, I really don't know. I've been searching for answers as to why it's been my children, uh, why my kids. I've been searching for answers for the last three years. However, there are other children, without naming anything, anybody else, that this has happened to at the same nursery. Now, what exactly are you referring to that has happened to the other children, which well, has happened to your children as well? Changes in eye colour, changes in your shape. Out of 22 pupils in one class, they had eight children on, um, what do you call that red flag thing? Child protection, a child protection um I would have to look up the actual terminology for that. It's when it's when a child is placed on a. Um, well, this is a part one. We're just getting through the yeah. things, so to just just we can mention things. We can we can add that later. Okay. A child protection order. A child protection order sorry, yeah. And um, so, out of a class of twenty-two kids, eight of them were on a child protection order, and the nursery in question. Um, you know, I don't. I, obviously, I'm not allowed to name them, but there have been several, uh, more than average children taken into care, uh, because of the. Um, it could be the area. They could put it down to the fact that um, it's in Leith in Edinburgh, so therefore, it's quite a poverty-struck place. Some of it's not, but some of it is, um, and maybe some of these kids. Well, of course, some of these kids need to be in care. However, it does have a lot of cases where children are removed for less than you would um, normally be removed for, if you know what I mean. Now, what about this thing in Scotland, which refers to they're going to have a, a family carer. Uh, it, mm. As soon as you become pregnant, the state will have, um, the Scottish state will have... Uh, what was that? A named person. A named person. Mm -hmm. And they'd be in charge of your child. Yeah, uh, I've heard that. Has that actually happened or have there been any uh, mm. versions of that happening on a trial basis or anything like that? Not that I know of, but I think there was quite a lot of people that weren't very happy about it um, coming about. Um, however, we did recently, Didi, didn't we, read a report um, saying that the Scottish government were looking into the amount of children yeah, that had, had it was on the Scot Scottish news. Um, the government are actually looking into why the amount of children in care has went up. Was it three hundred percent in ten years? Sure I'd have to check the actual statistics. Is that due to what the list law that Tony Blair brought in? I gather. Again, correct me. I'm I'm, I'm not aware of this legislation in detail, but there's things affecting children being taken into care in, in a very large number. Exactly. And a lot of these children are taken into care under the term terminology of risk of emotional abuse. And the Scottish Government are actually, they've come out and they've said that they're going to do an investigation into this. And this was on the telly, on the news, because obviously... When? It's quite um, is that two current? Weeks ago, was it? So we're talking uh, January 2019. Yeah, it would have been, was it just about Christmas time? Sure, it would have been about the 21st. Something like that. 20, it was in the last couple of months, anyway. Yeah. Um, so obviously that's a bit concerning. Um, however, I have actually approached the um, Scottish Parliament hoping to get an appointment, but they haven't got back to me as yet since I saw that news. I mean, you seem to, you're saying you're approaching these things, you're talking about these things in a very um, logical and coherent and intelligent manner. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to figure out why they would um, you know, take your children if you're like that or what. Well, they said um, that they, it was interesting as well because I had never seen a psychiatric nurse in my life. And on the day they removed my children, I went in the morning, but they didn't tell me they were going to remove my children that day. This was on Friday the 14th of October 2016. Dropped off the kids at nursery and I was told by the nursery head teacher 
that she'd made an appointment for me with a psychiatric nurse. And I asked her why, and she said that she thought I'd be stressed because of the amount of moves that I'd had, and she just wanted me to get some help if I needed it. So I agreed, obviously, to go. I went to see her, and the CPN said to me, she said she thought I had anxiety, circumstantial anxiety, and that I was to see her in another four weeks. So when I went back to collect my children, and they said, you'll have to go up to the court because we're taking an emergency care order out. I said, well, why is that? And they said, well, we're a little bit worried about your mental health. And I said, well, I've actually got, I've just seen the CPN you asked me to see. And she's told me to come back in four weeks and diagnose me with anxiety. Um, however, they didn't look very happy about that, to be honest. Um, in what said, way, and, and wh who was not very happy and were they not very happy with with what kind of um, view? Well, I mean, were they not very happy because you didn't have enough of a mental disorder or did you not have a mental disorder? Well, or was there anything, like, I mean, wh wh which yeah. way are we looking at this? Um, basically, they looked unhappy about the fact that um, I'd been, it, it seemed to me, it appeared to me, they weren't happy that my the diagnosis wasn't, um, you know, it didn't state anything. I've got anxiety. Well, loads of people have got anxiety. Um, but it doesn't mean that you get your children removed. Um, but the actual social worker in question took the piece of paper with a diagnosis on it and said, that means nothing. If I say you're mentally unfit, you're mentally unfit. And threw it across the room. So I, that's where I realised they weren't happy about the diagnosis. In what way? I mean, could you do, explain that m more that they were unhappy? You're, sh you're inferring or maybe you're stating directly mm -hmm. that there's an ulterior motive to, I believe, I believe there is. to this. So, okay, yeah. what do you, uh, did, before we just, okay, let, let, let's now explain, or can you explain why you feel there's this ulterior motive? Wh why do you feel it's just because you've had bed bugs, you've had the kids taken off you? Is that basically it? Well, as, as I say, I've read out the things that I can actually, you know, that they, they said the assault, that um, I had assaulted somebody, which I did, um, who had one black eye. Okay, you assaulted somebody, right? Yeah. So what exactly happened? What, what was the circumstances to that? Well, basically, um, my little girl, Alicia, who was three at the time, had said something about her father, which was really quite unnerving. Um, and I don't know if I can really say that. Well, say, say it. But, um, okay. She said, Daddy gives me snuffles. And um, What's exactly that? Well, that's what I wondered, and I thought she meant, I said, well, what snuffles, darling? And she said, um, when he does that, like that, but down there, Mummy, down there. And I thought that was quite strange. Um, so I phoned to ask him about it, because obviously we were split up, and he said... Um, what, are you, what is she talking about? And I said, well, I just wanted to ask you, you know, I was hoping he was going to say something like, yeah, it's when I rub her neck or, you know, when you <laughs> blow on a kid's neck or something like that. I mean, snuffles is the sort of thing I would think a dog would. I don't know. I'd, I'd never heard the word snuffles before. So I wasn't sure what it meant. So I went up to question him about it and it became a bit heated and... Um, I basically... Sorry, I didn't quite hear that. Uh, uh, it, it, it became what? Quite heated, the discussion. Uh, now you're being very diplomatic there. What exactly happened? Well, I went up to his house to face him with the accusations that my daughter had made about sexual abuse. And who were you with? Were there any other witnesses? There were people already in the house. And who were the people? Um, there was a guy called Paul Ward. There was a, another girl called Denise. There was a girl called Louise who was with me, um, but I only went up to ask him what actually was happening. I was extremely upset at the time, and at the same time as that, your daughter comes out with something like that. You know, you're hoping for a just it's going to be a normal kind and of reason explanation. Person uh, staying, or how many times, or what was the what was the n a number of times that um, the father and and the, the child and, and yourself were together in any kind of well, caring family way? 
we were in a family unit for about a year after our birth. Um, he wasn't there a lot. He had his own house. I had my own house. Um, and he would come and take the children, say, for example, to the park for the afternoon or to the museum. Was this um, informal arrangements or was it arranged by any kind of legal authority? No, no, it wasn't. It was, it was informal arrangements. Um, and basically, um, she, the, he didn't spend a lot of time with them, but he did look after them now and again for a couple of hours here and there every week. And was he happy with that? And were the particular circumstances involved there? Um, not particularly. It was mostly in the afternoons because... They went to nursery in the morning. So I would phone and say, can you take them for a couple of hours to the park or can you take them to the museum so I can get some housework done or whatever it was I needed done. And when did the snuffles start or when did you, when she start telling you about it? Uh, she started telling me about it in, it was January 31st, 2016. Because I'll never forget that day. So obviously. what age was she then? She was three. Um, so it was, yeah, it was really difficult to hear. And Where did this situation happen? Well, to ask a two, uh, sorry, to ask a three-year-old where it happened, um, you know, I didn't, it's difficult to kind of like ask them where was, where did that happen about? Um, but it, it, well, did it happen at, in, a, in the home or some other location or was well, it I'm special circumstances or what? Yeah, certainly, um, I don't know where it, where it happened, to be perfectly honest. I don't know. Um, and obviously this is just alleged allegations from my daughter. But, you know, at that age, kids don't lie. And it was unnerving because um, Sophia was behaving in quite a strange manner also. Um, she had a... Well, she kept on trying to sit on... When I was lying on the settee with her, she would always try to get her bottom near my face and um, Alicia said that's because she wants you to kiss her bum mummy like daddy does so um, yeah so I went up to confront him with it and I took with me my friend Louise and there was two Who, guys who's Louise and such um, I don't actually know her sex no I do know her sex well, but I mean, uh, I mean in what status is she in terms of why did you take her around? Well, than she was else? my hairdresser. She was my friend, um, and I passed our hairdresser shop nearly every day, going to the shop. So I'd pop in and see her. Uh, so she offered to come with me, basically, to confront him with it. And so what happened then? Well, once we got into the house, he had basically uh, he had Paul Ward, Denise and another girl there already. Um, and I said to him, what is all this about? I need to speak to you. You've been ignoring my phone calls. And Alicia said, you've given her snuffles. You know, what on earth would you say that for? And why is Alicia also saying really sensitive stuff about how um, Alicia's saying Sophia's mummy, that's why she's doing it, because she wants you to kiss her bottom like daddy does. And I said, um, why are the kids saying stuff like this? And um, he basically didn't answer me, um, wouldn't... He, what, what do you mean by basically didn't answer? Well, what he, exactly happened? Instead of him sitting down and saying, uh, you know, what are you talking about? He got really irate and he said, um, what are you trying to say and all the rest of it? So... Um, it did become heated. I said, well, I only want to speak to you about it. Let's try and get this sorted out. You're their dad after all. And um, he, I, I then I, I did fly at him because I was really, really angry with him for being so um, elusive and just not even wanting to discuss the matter at all. So I hit him. And he, as I say... Had how, how did you hit him? What did you hit him with? And my what hands. Was the, yeah. just, what my, was, just my fist. And what did you hit where? Or what, what, what happened? Well, I hit his face. Um, and he had, as I say, a black eye. So um, it wasn't a bad black eye. It was a slight black eye. Um, 
but that's what had happened. And there were any legal authorities? Yes, he phoned the police straight away. Right. Um, the police came to my house and uh, arrested me and I was uh, charged with a minor assault. However, they had also said it was a domestic, even though we weren't in the same house together. We didn't live together and we hadn't done for a long time at this point. Um, they class it as a domestic. And in Scotland, if they do that, you're kept until the Monday. So that's what had happened. And on the Monday, I saw a judge uh, at court, the Edinburgh Sheriff Court, and I was given police bail. Uh, sorry, court bail. Now, is that a, is, is that a uh, what level of offence is that? A minor assault. Um, it's nothing major. It's, it's not great. I'm not proud of it. However, it's not the sort of thing that you could probably be jailed for, if you like. But uh, did this lead to the, eventually lead, uh, do you feel that this led to the seizure of your children? The, it was one of the reasons they gave. However, my children at the time of the assault were three miles away in their beds asleep with my mum looking after them. So the link between that and getting my children removed didn't make any sense to my lawyer's or my QC that I hired at a later stage, or me, really. Because if I'd had the children with me, I would have seen the point, and that's what my QC said in court as well. But with them being three miles away, blah de blah So what's the situation here? You're accusing, yeah, you've heard that your previous partner yeah. uh, has um, allegedly assaulted your your children and then you do something about it and then they end up jailing you? Or yeah, putting... well, taking my kids off me, yeah. Um, he died last year. He died on the 1st of November, didn't he? Yeah, a day after my birthday and he was found... Um, well, I, the, okay, you, we've had comment from Dee Dee that, uh, about the, the birthday thing. So what's the actual reason why you're mentioning that as relevant... The birthday what, sorry? Well, you're calling, uh, you're introducing this day after the birthday as if there's some significance to that. Well, I don't know if there's significance to it or not. I, I very much doubt it. It's just the way I remember when it happened, really. We don't know what the significance of it is. And we don't know the cause of death or what happened? No, because they said that they didn't know the cause of death and they would have had to have waited another eight weeks for a different post-mortem to have taken place. And his eldest son's 24 and he decided against it, uh, against waiting for the second post-mortem. So um, your, your, your partner drops dead. I mean, in, in what no. cir circumstances did he just pop I his clothes? I wasn't with him. I mean, I've not been with him. I mean, he, did he drop off a ladder? Did he, did he get hit no, no, by a he, bus or what? what he happened? was found in a girl's house, his partner's house, in Pilrig with... Um, Pneumonia was on his, it, it was one of the problems, and also he'd been smoking crack. So he, he was found with. So he was using heavy drugs? He was using heavy drugs, yeah. So yeah. He's, he's using heavy drugs, he's yeah. assaulted your, your, your child, and, and nothing's happening about this. Absolutely nothing. And no. you, get, you get your kids taken yeah, off. Yeah, exactly, you. Miles, exactly. You know. So um, where did he get the drugs from? Where did he get his drugs from? I yeah. don't know, I've not got a clue. Um, and was he an, was he known a registered drug user? Had he been assault, um, uh, arrested or anything like that? He had he had quite an extensive record, and he did see a doctor for his drug problem. Yeah, so he was a known uh, drug addict, if you like. Yeah. I mean, was he on drugs when you um, assaulted him? Um, probably. Yeah. When I first. How met would you him, know that? Would there be any medical reason? Because it seems that somebody's on drugs, assaulting and uh, children allegedly. Yeah. That um, this is a there's a decision made just to sort of uh, have no real investigation, take your kids off you, yeah. and he disappears off the scene. Yeah, it's it, it literally is a, exactly what you said. It is a a bit of a conundrum to be honest, because after Alicia said what she said about snuffles, I went straight to the nursery and said that I wanted the police involved with this. And the police seemingly didn't even, well, I know for a fact they didn't interview him at the station. They seemingly visited him in his house, said that they didn't 
they weren't taking the matter any further forward and it was dropped and I did feel very let down by the authorities about that because um, obviously they're my children, I'm trying to protect them and I felt that they didn't do what they would do and I, I don't know what the operation is, that they, the procedure is that they follow in a case like this, however I, I at least expected them to be taken to the police station and interviewed, but he wasn't. And what what connection do you know that your did you know or have you heard that your former partner uh, has with any other organisations or religious uh, groups of any kind? Uh, none at all, to be honest. Uh, he's, he wasn't religious at all. Um, he was atheist and he, I, I haven't ever heard that he was into any sort of paganism or satanic sect at all. So, and what about the other people in the house that he lived in? Did they or any other record, alleged re record that uh, of any kind of misdemeanor? Was what's the climate of this situation that we're talking about? Um, well, the police had tried to interview Denise, who gave a statement, and everybody who was in the house gave a statement, and I've got a copy of all the statements. And basically, sorry, at what time is this all happening? Is this when the, when the assault happened? About or half what? past seven at night or something. The assault yeah. actually had happened. However, because the house had quite a number of people in it, at the time, the police got witness statements from everybody there who said so that I'd hit him. Which you've admitted to anyway. Which I admitted, yeah. Yeah, I pleaded guilty. Well, I said to the police, well, I said no comment, no comment, because I wasn't sure. I didn't have legal representation with me at the time. And they said, did you hit Paul Swanson? And I said, yes. So I did admit it, yeah. But there were, well, the domestic issue. What's the class? What's the circumstances of a domestic? Is it normally a, a family row or whatever? Well, what what's what makes them give that decision? Um, well, I'm not sure actually, but normally, um, from what I know, a domestic would be classed as a domestic if you were living in the same house as somebody. However, we hadn't done for years. So I don't know if that legally a domestic falls under you being at two different, living at two different addresses, but because we'd been together as a couple at one point, maybe that's why they could class it as a domestic. I really don't know. I don't know. Okay, so um, le leading on to any other circumstances involving... The the lead up to the children are talking about are both but both children well being Sof being abused. Sophia was too allegedly small, yeah, to be talking about it, but she was acting strangely, trying to put her bottom on my face, as I said, on the settee, and it was Alicia who was older and obviously said she's doing that, mummy, because that's what daddy does. She wants her, she wants you to kiss her bum. So she, was, she wasn't able to actually articulate it because she was only just starting to talk. So did the other, did this affect the other child? Uh, the older child, Alicia, how did yeah. it affect her? Um, well, when she was in the shower, she used to behave really worryingly after the fact that she said, Daddy gives me snuffles. Um, one time I caught her, um, I was drying Sophia and I turned around and she'd actually bitten a bit of, of uh, off the, the soap bar that, uh, that was in the shower and she was trying to put it inside herself. And I said to her, why are you doing that, darling? Don't do that, it'll sting. And she said, oh, it's dirty, mummy, it's dirty. Um, and I don't think many kids do that, to be honest. So Now, what's your actual feeling about that? It's disgust. It's, I mean, there's there's no words for it. It's just horrendous. Because um, when I asked her why it was dirty, um, she basically said there's snakes, there's spiders. And um, when I looked into child abuse, which was something I thought I'd never have to do, uh, on the internet with reputable, well, the, the most reputable uh, sites that you can get advice from, it said that that was one of the um, one of the things children who have been sexually abused do 
sometimes is try to put soap and or wash their hands consistently um, because they feel dirty. So that's what I read on it. What but, about the um, snakes and spiders? Where, where, where does that come from? I don't know where that came from, um, but seemingly sexual abuse can bring out a lot of uh, nightmares in children and for some reason snakes and spiders seems to be what they talk about a lot. It's quite, um, you know, it's not a, it's not a one-off statement my, my daughter's made about snakes and spiders because when I looked it up, there was other children that was said that sometimes that's how they refer to things as. Um, but she also spoke about her daddy's spider. So I wasn't sure if she was talking about snakes and spiders. What sort of size are these spiders? Or, or, I mean... She and and where where have you read this, or where have you researched it that this, um, these the, terms are used? Well, there was a the only organisation organisation I could find for support of parents of sexually abused children, or supposedly, uh, a, a allegedly sexually abused children, was a uh, one in England, and they were called uh, Mosaic. So it was on there that I got the most support because I'd phoned them, and they sent me a lot of information to read. Um, and they were really helpful, actually. I mean, could you give more more details about that particular organisation? Maybe that could help other people in yeah, some way? Yeah, certainly. Um, they're called Mosaic. They're based in England, and it's a, a landline number. And the, they're a charity, and they're there for the support of sexually abused children. Um, so I'm not sure what age group that would cover, but obviously, probably... Uh, right up to 16 I would imagine and that was um, they were really helpful actually so I would encourage anybody if they're looking for any sort of support like that to get in touch with them and they're called Mosaic and how do you spell that M-O-S-I-A-C or what? Uh, I think it's M-O-S-A-I um, the, the way you would spell Mosaic normally I would have to write it down okay right okay well um We've we've sort of uh, done some detail in the background uh, of what's happened. Yeah. So let's move let's move forward and um, okay we've we've got the kids um, that they're being te that what exactly then happened when you were in a situation where these children were then taken from you and did it include all the all the children? You got no, two, the, no, um, not my son, and he was. I was trying to think. Oh. When Alicia was born, he would have been, um, I think he was 16, actually. Yeah, he would have been 16. So they had no, uh, this had no bearing on uh, my son at all. Um, but it did have for, obviously, Alicia and Sophia, unfortunately. So what is the story that then essentially brought you to contact me about this? Why is there something... <laughs> what because brought that the, situation? Because of the eye colour change, because because when as a mother, anybody who's a mother will know that you know your children and you know what their eye colour is and you know what they look like. And it worries me to think that this has happened because if it had happened, if I had reason to why it had happened, if there had been a medical um, issue then that would have explained it. Or if there had been some sort of allergy issue, that would have explained it. However, I don't have an explanation for this. And it's really worrying because both my children ha have completely different eye colours. And we're not just talking a couple of shades here. We're talking from blue to brown with Sophia and from greeny blue to hazel with Alicia. Um, so... I obviously didn't know anything about, you know, any of this and, and still I'm finding, a, you know, different theories, etc. online. But what I did have to do was look into it. And one of the things that kept on cropping up was cloning. And I know a lot of people will say, oh, that's far out. And it certainly is. But because the doctors have looked them over and said, yes, they have noticed that there's been a, a dramatic change in both the children but they don't know why. So then I had to start looking for answers because that didn't give me any answers. It just told me that it wasn't a medical condition. They'd suffered Okay, you've, you've come up with some you know, sensible, logical 
alternatives or, or some kind of reasoning for this. Yeah. What do you feel in your gut? What the hell has happened here? To be what, perfectly what honest. What is the background? Yeah. What, what's, your, what's your basic conclusion? My conclusion that I've drawn from this, and that's after a lot of extensive uh, research into Caucasian eye colours, um, things that, similar circumstances, which I couldn't find any of. Um, well, actually, this has happened in Edinburgh before, two years previous to 2016, to a couple who had a little girl and a little boy. Exactly the same thing. The police looked into it, but they said that they couldn't find... They, they, they admitted, yes, there'd been an eye colour change in both the little girl and the little boy, who were two and three uh, years old, respectively, but they didn't know why it had happened. And the same thing happened. They were put to the consultant at the sick kids, and they also said they didn't know why it had happened. And that actual lady, who obviously I can't name, was given death threats, and she had to move to Portugal. Uh, so, could, could you give a lot more detail on that without me mentioning the, the names? Well, it was through... And where do they go in Portugal? Because... You, I don't know. I, I don't I know. And even if I, I did mean, know, Or, I or the region it. or... or I really don't know my old Why um, Portugal? Why why not somewhere else? I don't know. It was just somewhere that they choose, chose to move to, um, to get away from Edinburgh. Because for some reason, people um, are very... They don't want to know about this. This is the strange thing. You know, this is two kids we're talking about. My, my you know, daughter. It's, it's, it's a terrible thing. And yeah. it's maybe something they don't want to talk about because it's uncomfortable. It's perfectly natural. But you're implying something else. Well, I, I'm, just, I'm just wanting to get to the bottom of it because I want to know why it's happened to my children. I want to know why it's happened to other children. And I want to know why it's ha still happening to other children at this particular nursery in Edinburgh. It needs to be looked into. There's something not right. So, okay, one other case. What, I mean, what the, what's your bottom line on this? Um, I believe it's human trafficking. I believe that they're cloning children and that they're selling them to infertile, rich couples. You mentioned That's on the phone it involved Ireland as well. Yeah, um, I've been told it does involve Ireland. Um, well, what have you been told? What's, her, what's the old beef on this? Well, it's actually quite scary to start talking about stuff like this because um, there's a lot of people that are very scared in Edinburgh because of the stuff that I'm talking about. Nobody's willing to come forward. Um, I mean, my partner, he'll come on camera and say what he knows. I didn't actually know him at this time, but I've got friends at the nursery who... One of the parents at the nursery noticed that my daughter was that different. She took it up with the teachers. And this is a parent of another child who noticed Alicia was so different. She said that there's something, Alicia looks different. And she was told, oh, don't worry about it. It's, um, she's just a little bit pale. She's, it's because she's... Who told her that? Who's making these excuses? This is the, the head teacher at the nursery, Kay. I can't remember her second name. Um, but she herself... I have tried to contact through a friend who still sees her every day because her little girl goes to the same school because now these children are, are at school age and so is Alicia. She's in primary one somewhere else um, and she's not willing to come forward um, because there's an air of... The, I think people are worried that the social work come down on their kids, to be honest. Um, I don't know, but... There's something not right here, and I'm just trying to get it out there so people are aware, and I, I'd really encourage people, if this has happened to your child, if you've noticed a change in their eye colour, how odd it may sound, um, if you could please get in touch. But you mentioned something else about um, an incident at a, at a school or with something, yeah. a couple of people who didn't seem to be looking very look like people. Yeah, that's right. Um, one of my best friends, little girls, was in Alicia's class and um, we'll just call her Annie, say. So I was round at my friend's house and this was very near the time the children had had this dramatic change. And I said to, I said to Annie... Before or after? After the change. And I'd said to Annie, um, 
oh, have you seen Alicia? Are you still playing with her? And she said, eh, oh, Alicia's different now. And um, I said, eh, yeah, that's right, darling, she is. And I thought, well, this kid's actually noticed this too, you know. But children are very perceptive. And also she was very close with Alicia. She's her best friend. She, and she said, um, and I know how this is going to sound, but she said uh, there was dinosaurs that came into the class. And her mum heard her say this too. Dinosaurs came into the class, big green dinosaurs. And they were scary. And we, were, we had to hide. We had to hide behind the teachers. And they were scary. They were scary. They took Alicia and they took Max. And they went up, up, up. Up to the sky, big green dinosaurs, and uh, we were like, "What sort of details are these dinosaurs? What are the descriptions? Height?" And she said they were well. She said they were really tall. She did, well. She made out. She said, "You know, big, big dinosaurs, big dinosaurs," and that's how she referred to them. Um, she didn't really. I said, "Well, what color were they?" She said they were green, um, and. I said, uh, what did the teachers do? And she said, nothing. She said, but we, we, we're we hiding, we're hiding. Goes, scary dinosaur, scary. And she, I think she was about three at the time, Annie. But her mum was really shocked at what she'd said, and so was I, because she was almost reenacting it, and you could see the fear in her face as she was telling the story. So I don't know why, you know, she'd said that. So when that. is this? Sorry? This must be quite recently then. No, this was just after the children okay. had oh, been sorry. changed. Yeah. yeah, and now this little girl we're talking about will be in primary one, so she'll be five, five years old. So she now there is there is a government program where an alien egg uh, is found in school playgrounds, and um, the police and emergency services dress up and all this sort of stuff like out of Close Encounters. Or uh, the eight, what the seat, what the one, the alien, whatever. Anyway, um, and this is actually meant to shock the children into thinking that aliens have come and landed in their playground. Have you heard of that program? It was in the papers. Cathy Morgan made reference to that. Right, I have. Have you actually. heard anything like that in the Scottish papers? Not that I know. Essentially, of. that the authorities dress up like scientists, and there's an alien craft has crashed in the in the school grounds. And the children in other schools uh, in higher levels are meant to write up about all this. Um, I've certainly not heard of it, but, you know, it wouldn't surprise me. Um, I mean, what, what I'm looking at here, is there any, ev any suggestion that basically those green uh, dinosaurs mm. were basically people dressed up in some kind of costume? I don't think so. I mean, not the way, um, first of all, you know, the, if if something like that happens in a class, um, your your kid would run up to you and tell you, "Oh, today we did this," or the teachers would tell you. Um, well, we in the program this. that Cathy Morgan was alerted about, uh, which was in the newspapers, ah. uh, the children were forbidden to talk to their parents. Now, the point is, these children that you mentioned have been taken; mm -hmm. they must have been brought back. What, uh, can can they not be asked about this? Um. Well, probably actually, um, and uh, there'll be a, she'll be a lot more articulate now because she's she's five. So yeah, very probably actually, yeah. Well, could you do that? Is is there any way of finding out about this? Yeah, I can do. Um, I can get. Um, I've got my friend's number, so I can do that after this and get back to you tomorrow about that. Yeah, certainly. Yeah, well, that's worth probably calling it a day in part one. Okay. I mean, how do you feel about this and, and the statements you've made? I feel, um, to be honest, I'm very nervous about um, this whole situation because, thanks, the amount of people that I've tried to get to um, come and, well, not, not come here, but to try to just alert people to what is going on at this nursery. There's something not right. Um, Irvin Welsh makes a reference to it in one of his books, which is actually banned in this country. Uh, who's this? Irvin Explain. Welsh who wrote Train Spotting. Right, okay. And what's the book exactly? The book it's... was called Nuns Upon a Time, and it was banned in this country. Um, I managed to get a copy of it from America, but in it there's reference to this particular nursery. Now, uh, just because of one Scotch accent, could you just 
re-announce that, announce or pronounce that a little bit clearer? Um, yeah, he, he's, the, the, the book is called Nuns Upon a Time instead of Once Upon a Time. And That's spelled N? N-O-N-C-E, Upon a Time. Okay. And um, it was banned in this country, like I said. It was never... Why was it banned? Well, what was the reason for that? Well, because basically it's got a lot of truth in it. Um, oh, but about what? About a case to do with a little girl who was murdered in 1983 called Caroline Hogg. Was um, that a major case in the papers? Yeah, major, I'm, I'm, major yeah. case, yeah. And because he'd made... And what, the, what's the basic story about that particular case? If you could just mention it now for the sake of the recording. Of course, Caroline Hogg was a four-year-old girl um, who was at Portobello Beach, lived near to Portobello Beach, and it was a... And f- uh, where's Portobello Beach? That's in Edinburgh, and it's a very sandy beach. It was a very sunny day, and she, w- she went missing. She was abducted and later found murdered. And she was only four. And, and, and what kind of injuries did the individuals suffer from? I think she had been, unfortunately, she, well, that being an understatement, she had been um, sexually assaulted and strangled. And Susan Maxwell was another little girl that was murdered around about that time. And they managed to get somebody for it, Robert Black. I think he got... Well, he, he was in prison until he died, and he died in January 2000. How long was he in prison for, and what age was he? I couldn't tell you, Miles, but I think he was in his 30s when he got to jail, because this would have been about 1983, and he, di- he only died a couple of years ago. So he had been um, sentenced for at least three murders of little girls in Britain. Now, you have... We're going to close this in another minute or two yeah. uh, but could you um, explain what um, you think there's a paedophile ring and the whole thing going for, for 40 years and it's going this and that and all sorts of stuff and more importantly um, since you're talking about we have talked about soul swapping Yeah. what do you feel about all that science fiction, rubbish or no. complete complete madness or what, I mean uh, just talking uh, whatever I would, have, I would have thought it was complete madness if somebody had talked about it four years, three years ago to me. But I don't now because I've looked into it. And I think I sent you the video on the place that you can actually um, order a sleeve from. So, yeah, they can well, sell I, I don't have any like that on my computer, but uh, oh, what, what, what exactly does that contain? What have you been, what's your information on this? Well, it was a lot about Donald Marshall that I looked into primarily. Um, to do with cloning, and there's seemingly two different types of cloning. There's now, could, cl- could you explain who Donald Marshall is? I mean, he's an internet guy, people. But what, what do you know about this, and what have you learned in your experience about this? Um, all I know is that Donald Marshall is somebody who became famous online. Um, when was that? Do you know? A few years ago, he wrote a letter on the internet about the Illuminati exposing some of what they get up to. And I, th- I believe he became famous that way. Um, he's got a number of forum groups and he um, runs one called Against Human Cloning. So, yeah, sorry, what were we talking about? Well, just uh, who this person is, this is from the purpose point of view of the viewer who may not know who that person is so if you could explain why you went after that well what's what's your reasoning for looking at that well my reasoning for looking at it was because i i want i wanted answers and i still want answers as to why two children can simultaneously change eye color and when i started looking into it and obviously the doctor said it wasn't medical I had a fo- I've got photographs and I can see the dramatic change. And the only logical thing that I could kind of draw after going through all the, um, well, maybe I shouldn't say logical, but after going through all the possibilities that can cause eye colour change in a child of that age group, the only thing left for me to look at was cloning. Um, and that was through extensive internet searching. And that's when I fell across a lot of stuff 
that Donald Marshall had put online about cloning. Okay, we're going to, we've got you, this, you've had a very long journey, you've done a very excellent presentation, uh, coming the whole way down from Scotland mm. to, um, to mm -hmm. give this down here in Wiltshire, it was a heck of a drive overnight. It was, yeah. And um, it's a pretty wintry day outside, which is why you're wrapped up in a yeah. warm scarf and all a that. Tartan scarf, yeah. But we'll we'll give that a we'll we'll call that the end of part one. It's we'd be running I think about an hour and fifteen minutes. And okay. uh, if you're able to get any further information, and we'll we'll look into some of the paper trail on this because, yeah. and also some of the the evidence. And these are allegations, but what do you think is going to happen to your... Are you able to still access the children in any way at all, or they've gone or what? <sighs> well, to start with, I was seeing the children three times a week for two hours a time, and the social work department have since then managed to get the contact down by saying that the children are too upset when leaving me, and this is obviously we're talking about the children who now have brown eyes, in, in what way are they upset? Well, they're upset because Do they their want mom. to see you at all? Yeah, they want, they want to stay with me. This is why they're upset. They don't want to go away from me. And they're upset. They want to be with their mum. And they said it's upsetting the children too much to see me. So they have actually taken it to hearing after hearing after hearing. And gradually, over the course of the last two years, they've now managed to get it down to an hour a month. So that's how long I see my children for, an hour a month. And they've split them up. Yep. So it's so what's awful. the what's the present situation with your children? You you mentioned they were sold off to some other couple or something. Well, what's, yeah, what's that? That's what, what I believe. What's the legal actual situation? Well, a, a what's the legal situation, and mm. what's your feeling the situation is? Well, th this is black market adoption. This is exactly what I think it is, and um, it's this. Sorry. Yeah, the, the, the social worker now trying to get permanency, which means that I'll never be able to get my kids back. It strips you of your parental rights. Um, it's just been an absolute nightmare because if the authorities have got your... If for whatever reason, if the authorities want your child, whether it's to protect them, and let's face it, some children do need protected, or if they just... I don't know why they might want your child, like my children, but if they do... They, they, can ha they can get them so easily with just so little on you. I mean, risk of emotional abuse hasn't even happened yet. You know, this is, some, th this is an actual legal terminology, which is enough for a judge to take your kids and put them into social work care. A reason, that I, a, a definitive reason that hasn't even occurred yet. Risk of emotional abuse in the future. Okay, but you're making a very serious allegation yeah, I'm to right. the state of Scotland. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, I don't want to put words in your mouth. I no. hope I haven't done that. Um, but and you're making these allegations. Yep. Of a whole massive conspiracy. Yes. You've even brought on one part of this account yep. so-called aliens, which could be part of a schools program, uh -huh. uh, which they actually shock the children involved. This is actually a published program. Uh, Kathy Morgan made a lot of reference to this and made we've already investigated this. This has been in the newspapers quite some time ago now. Right. But uh, I don't know why the school authorities would uh, want to shock children about alien landings and stuff like that. So, mm. I mean, I'm not... I'm inferring that maybe those dinosaur aliens that walked into the school were actually people in some kind of dress dressed up to look like aliens, to shock the children as part of that program. But I don't mm -hmm. know. I'm just mm -hmm. making that observation. That, that's they may possible. very well have been aliens. It may, you know, having aliens walk into the school, it's happened in other countries in the world, in Rhodesia, I think. Yeah. Um, where they, they walked in and uh, in the playground or the area where they were playing. It's a famous case in Africa. Yeah. Um, but um, I think that's probably enough for now. Okay, um, Miles. I mean, we're making very serious allegations here. Uh, yeah, I know. And we've got a lot of ifs and buts there. Yep. And um, is this basically, you're assuming now you're never going to see your kids again, and so you've got nothing to lose. Is that right? Exactly, Miles. I've got nothing to lose. 
I've not got my children. I don't know what's happened to them, um, as in their eye colour change. And I worry that this is happening to not just my children. And I know it's not just my children that have been affected by this. And I'll, the reason I'm doing this is to get it out there so that people are aware of it and to try to put a stop to anybody else going through it because it's, it's been like hell on earth for me the last three years, as you can imagine. And I don't want anybody else going through this and I want people to be aware of it um, so that we're more informed because I know how this sounds, oh, your, eye, your, your children's eye colours have changed, but I have got photographic evidence, I've got the consultant's reports, so it's not that I'm just thinking this up. Well, I mean, I, I mean, do you think they're just going to take you off to the funny farm because you've made these crazy allegations and obviously this is just silly and therefore you need sectioned? Well, they've never sectioned me, but last year in January, um, 2018 it would have been, um, they said that they wanted, they thought I should have a rest. I just found out that my children were getting split up and yes, I was extremely upset, couldn't stop crying, etc. And they took me into the Royal Edinburgh Hospital, as they put it, for a rest. But I was never sectioned. And they said that I was under extreme emotional stress and that I was suffering from anxiety. So I was there for... So, I mean, if, if you're having your children taken away from you, you're just meant to sit back and say, that's yeah, fine. Exactly. Take, take the kids away mm -hmm. and um, have a nice day. Yes, exactly. And I, I feel they did this to, to discredit me um, because... Um, at the end of the day, um, yes, I'm talking about my children's eye colour changing, but I can show anybody the photos and you'd have to be blind or colourblind not to see it. It's so obvious. Yeah. So ultimately, um, we're dealing with a situation where claims of uh, cover-up, constitutional corruption, um, when really maybe you're just a distraught individual, everything's fine. The children are in a better state and really we should just move along and forget wish, about it. Yeah, I honestly wish that that's what this was all about and then I could sleep at night. But I know I'm a mother and you know what your kids look like and that is the biggest insult of all I've had through the last three years because people can't deny it once I show the photographs to them, once they've read the reports. But to start with, when you tell people, oh, my kid's eye colour changed and 24 hours is missing out a care plan, they don't believe you. They think you're off your head. But I've got proof, I've got evidence, and I'm not off my head. So at the end of the day, I just want people to be aware of it and I want to stop it happening to others, basically. Well, with that, we'll call this an end of part one. Okay. And it's a, it's a, it's a very serious situation. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, okay. Laura, for coming to the Basis Project. And Thanks, uh, that's what it's all about, uh, saving saving our future, which yeah. is our children. Exactly. Infants we're talking about here. You know, two and three-year-olds are just babies. Okay, that's it for now. Cheerio. Okay.